because uh, Dr. Pandey is uh, giving us his parting speech. Oh, in fact, I requested him that uh, before he retires, he should give a seminar so that uh, he can share some of uh, his experiences, both uh, good and bad. Not only good, but those that you thought were not good, so that other people don't repeat those things. And uh, he agreed that uh, he will share his uh, knowledge, experience, with uh, all of us, especially to the younger people who have joined uh, more recently. Dr. Pandey has been here more than 36 years now? Okay, something like that, okay. He doesn't remember. And uh, he's uh, one pathologist who has worked on all the mandate crops. So that is uh, something that uh, no other pathologist in Ecclesiat has done, working on all the mandate crops. Not just working, also contributing significantly. So he joined as a uh, cereals pathologist, worked uh, in groundnut pathology, and now working in uh, legume pathology in chickpea, and pigeon pea mostly. Uh, so he has uh, that uh, vast canvas of working on all the mandate crops of Ikrisat. And uh, I will now request uh, Dr. Pandey to give his uh, gyan to the others. So Dr. Pandey, uh, since uh, we have many other things for the day, so Please give about 30, 35 minutes. Leave about 15, 20 minutes for people to ask questions. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, yeah, this was a kind of a seminar I'm going to do. I'm going to give. The title you all have uh, read, it's a romance, actually. Right? So just a romance to remember, it's remember for myself, and maybe as Dr. Gora has mentioned that I have to inspire the young scientists and our successors. So I thought that I'm not sure whether I'm so learned and I have gathered so much of moss rolling from the hills that I can tell something, but it, it all began somewhere and somehow, and all those experiences I will be sharing. Yes, I have, I'm in fact a very lucky person that who got the opportunity throughout keep on working and keep on uh, working on different new crops, meeting different new people, exploring the new areas, and uh, whatever I can do to, the, uh, to my best, perhaps, or to my commitment, I have done it. So I hope that all of you have read the abstract, so I will not go back to it, and then I will start directly. In fact, the title itself took a long time because it was difficult for me to put together my 40 years of romance with my subject or my baptization into the subject, how I was, how I entered into the subject and then how I have made the progress and try to contribute in the, in the field of plant pathology and agriculture in general. So this was itself was something like a comprehensive examination and you are running between room and toilet time and again and trying to gather words and uh, vocabulary. So this is basically, it all began, this journey all began in the, in the lap of nature, in the passion for nature. That is right from the childhood. And I would like to decode the word passion is whatever you try to do from your heart and soul with the commitment and whatever for, that is very important for. Uh, so I try to just put all 40 years in passion for nature and how I converted that passion into profession and went into the science of plant pathology and then how I went back after training to the mountains, then mountain to tropics, I mean, 
main zikri site where I spent large number of my years, 34, 35 years, and in between I had a stint in the desert. So, in fact, coming from the Himalayas, I have been to the desert also, and ahead of time, because the new science developed, the new vistas of science opened, new tools came. So, we have to cope up with that and how I, we try to justify that. And of course, it all went, it all went where all of you are with me and some of are not here today, but I definitely have my great gratitudes to them who have helped me in this journey. Now, this all, this is my village where I was born. This is my home. So, it started in the lap of nature. This is my, our ancestor home and I think central part is, but as belongs to this Pondi clan. And my father, my mother and my eldest son, this is how we live. Simple people, but comfortable and very simple. This is where we were, it, it all started in the lab. And my school, you know, perhaps you would like to, this is the road to my school where I used to walk. And still we walk four to five miles, we don't call it kilometers every day. And uh, one has to all the time, Keeps. Once uh, Dr. Gauda asked me and uh, C. Sharma, we were locking like this, why you parties have to keep it like this? This is because of this nature that we keep on walking, you know. And then I did my schooling in the Harcourt Butler in Shimla, which is behind those Deodar trees, which is a beautiful place. And this is how I was. And then the first lesson, walking in the nature, walking here and there, from the first time that I can remember, I was passionate for the nature, for the shikadas, for the butterflies all the time. Oh, it used to make me mad with the joy when I saw the clouds come up and how they would intercept each other. I felt in even in those early days that I was surrounded compassionately with the companionship, very intimate with the nature. I used to dissect the frogs, I used to dissect the butterflies, try to see how they are moving. So perhaps that was the, my first lesson with the science, the curiosity came, why it is happening, and then it emerged in the form of three questions, why it is happening, how it is happening, and what made this to happen. And I, these are the three key questions which any scientist or grooming scientist has to ask him or herself at any stage. And this starts quite early. Then we try to give it a shape into a passion to profession. And my first instinct or by, uh, the training, the formal training was with or within pathology was the first pathogen. Okay, I did BSc agriculture, etc., etc. Came with the mushroom, the fascination and how to grow mushrooms. This is an edible fungus, and that was a part of my training in MSc. And here I did a lot of adventurous things. Means this spore print itself was a big thing in those days. So I've got success in getting the spore print and getting it to mutated, taking this spore print to the civil hospital Solon under an X-ray, bribing that gentleman two rupees, just lower down the X-ray machine and expose them for X-ray. Let us see what happened. Those were the some innovative experiments, you know. And then the time came after MSc, I had to work for Apple. So Apple scab was a budding disease in those days, which was introduced from from uh, from uh, from, uh, from uh, JNK to Himanchal, and I had a stint. But anywhere, this is just to set the scene for this seminar. And then, of course, I was very raw by that time. I was not knowing the real research. Keeping the tradition of the family, I wanted to go to army, but couldn't get success. Then from raw to recruit and the researcher, and then I came to IRI to complete my PhD. So I became a researcher. And that was the time when people were talking about wheat trusts of uh, wheat trust and that to put stem rust, which is Paxunia, Graminus, Triticae, I think. And this was perhaps one of the last researches which were done in 1970s before the UG-99, how to control. And after that, the UG-99 in 1999, and after a gap of 30 years, that this uh, disease emerged. And then again returned to mountains, I qualified ARS and went to Almora, another. So the train took me to the Almora and there I was. You may be, there are some familiar faces. Uh, of course, one is my wife and uh, she just came and was not comfortable in the hills. And he is a director now, Almora, Dr. S. Bichawan, who was a millet, a millet uh, breeder here. And he is also a director. There I was, I have to work with the rust, buns, wheat, barley of oats and other things and blast of rice and finger millet. Maybe 
that gives me a good opportunity and exposure to handle different pathos systems and develop and help the breeders. All through this, I was working very closely with the breeders, shoulder to shoulder with many breeders. And then this was the major area from 1980 to 2013 uh, when I came to Itreset, Sorghum, Millets, and this is how I try to summarize that I worked on major, in between I worked here and there also, which I have not put particularly to Saudi Arabia and all. So this is perhaps I was, as Dr. Gora mentioned, that who worked on all Itreset crops, almost all possible areas I had my interferences I should say or contaminants as a contaminant I was there so this was a good uh, area. This was the 1980s organ pathology boss Dr. Mogogo who came from the Cambridge very learned man but who had some kind of aversion for publications and research you know and this is here me and Bandopadhyay we were chosen and then of course I think from here we have only this person is there, Rangaswami Reddy. So this was a small sorghum team. He's still with us, Rangaswami Reddy, still works with, uh, with us in legume pathology. So we started working. And the very fascinating work which we did was, Mogogo thought India is small. You know, India is one thing that all Indians know all languages. He never realized that the person has come from the mountain. He asked me to go to Dharwad. I said, where is Dharwad? I just looked like this. He said, go to Dharwad. You had to establish some uh, the technique. But Harvard was a wonderful place because it was very similar to Hills and Ray. He asked, you work on downy mildew. Yes, I worked. I was smart enough. So I have read about downy mildew, but there was no incubator. There was no basic research done other than Shafiullah, but there was nothing there. But fortunately, and this was the first plant which we found in uh, animal husbandry section of uh, University of Dharwar now where there was a downy mildew on the wild sorghum. Perhaps it was sorghum halipens. I have those notes with me where it was sporulating. So this was the mother plant which we took and then we did the sandwiching, which people know commonly. And there was no incubator. We did it under the tree. And I think Bayahati's brother was there who helped us in keeping it. And then we established the one hectare screening technique using infector row and which became popular. But as I said, the Mugogo wanted to have a noble research, so it was not published. So this was a very, uh, very, I mean, uh, attractive thing we did. Same thing we repeated, and in those days, it was very common, you know, to, because our season and Southern African season was alternate. When you are, you stop, you, you sow here, they harvest, and they harvest there, we sow here. So as soon as we finished here in 1982, I think we, I accomplished in a sense that the standardized the sorghum downy mildew screening technique, both field greenhouse and uh, uh, incubators in here. And then they asked me to uh, go to Zimbabwe, Zambia, and all. And again, I was sent to Golden Valley directly. And oh, I'm forgetting the name of that person who was from IAS. He said, Golden Valley, you should go. I said, OK, sir, I went there. The cassette was kind enough to give me an office in the hotel, you know, where the, I said, why don't you give me out? I said, no, no, you work from this one hotel, $80 per day, something like that. Good. So when I, we went there, Golden Valley, there was no incubator. So this was again, but the temperatures in Golden Valley in the evening were in between 16 and 18, which is ideal for sporulation of uh, the fungus. So how to encash that? So this is a kind of a field incubator. We laid with the slabs or bricks in between we put the mud and irrigated the mud we wet it and then put the hissing cloth or the gunny bags and newspapers and then covered and these are the local people this but this was a cedar project and infected row and this is how we infected the germinated seedlings of dms 652 and is 642 two varieties which were highly susceptible to sorghum a downy mildew and then established and this worked very well and then the cedar team came and the reward was a big project to the SEDEC. This thing similar we did in the Zimbabwe. I think these were the Zimbabwe uh, in Metopos. So our official secretaries here, and uh, the, the, who worked, and then we established and De Milano, and then we did in the in, in the Golden Valley, Zambia, and this is what. 
The point I am making here that if you have a quest to do something, if you have an imagination, you understand the host pathogen system, you do not need all the time the sophisticated thing. Yes, if it is available, it is good. It makes your journey easier, but here it was done in the absence of that. Now, then the second challenge came, which is still persists. And this work we persuaded with Dr. Billam Reddy on, on charcoal rot which was a tough, just reverse of downy mildew. Downy mildew needs low temperatures, high humidity, more moisture, and this was a disease which was predisposed by soil moisture stress. And this was one of the perhaps very unique experiments we did where we tried to eliminate the best, all possible microorganisms from the soil using methyl bromide. I think that's also the history in Icrisat and methyl bromide. I think if you go and uh, hit the website, you will find that it is one of the most dangerous and poisonous gas. We did it here and each plot was 81 square meters which were covered with the polythene. And then we uh, removed, uh, this is uh, uh, this uh, uh, methyl bromide were released and the differences were clear what we found that drought alone, how much damage it done in those days we used to measure the damage in terms of lodging maybe 20 percent, pathogen alone 40 percent, pathogen and drought together 60 to 80 percent and the, and the variety was CHS 6. So, this is how we did and this is how we used to measure number of node crossed etc. And this is uninoculated, no toothpick inoculation in this case. Further to this which perhaps I'm, I brought it for the Balaams to share up, this is the experiment which perhaps was the founding stone of I think today's nonsense and juicy sorghums and uh, maybe the fodder sorghums, sweet sorghums etc. This is again in the same way the whole field was sterilized and then different crops were and these were the numbers which came I think, uh, which were really good and remained unlodged or did not show any progress of the pathogen. So, here we start working on the charcoal rock. And this is how we used to measure old standing. This culture is perhaps is people are feeling shy or maybe the things have changed. We used to stand hours together in the field and we, unless and until you go near to your patient, you do not understand what the ailment is there. So, this is for the new generation. I am trying to tell, I am trying to convey the message that evaluation of something with your uh, yourself is very important. It, teaches you lot of things in a, in a good in due course. So, this is thousands and thousands of plants were split open and how much charcoal rot has spread and how many nodes it has crossed and how many soft stalks are there etc etc we used to take and in, in this field. And then in the meanwhile as we were a very good collaboration in those days between Africa and Asia frequent movement. There was a training course which was I think it was in French and we have to keep on talking hours together in English and they used to translate in French. This was held up in uh, I think Bamako where we had a, uh, we trained the several pathologists in the in, in West Africa as well as in the Eastern uh, pathologists from Western Africa region. So, it was a gave me this gave me a greater opportunity to understand the pathology, understand the disease complexes of West Africa as well as of East Africa on this one. Then there was a small stint in between where I was asked to work on the finger millets and uh, millets in Sadek as well as in Nigeria. And uh, again, there were limited facilities. This experiment I am bringing, this is how it has been sown in the Sub-Sahara. So, I used to cross between Kano and Niger almost every 15 days. One observation there, second in Ghana, I have to take something like that. So, one day I came there sowing the crops. So, I just earmarked those few fields on the way and the plots and see date of sowings and the incidence of downy mildew on millet. So, that was one of the, you know, just travel observations which converted into a publication. So, you do not need all the time, you know, infrastructure, sometimes just use your imagination. And this was a unique disease which is only in the photographs I have seen in the in the books, the downy mildew of finger millet. This is the only thing which, uh, uh, this, which we have published as the first report with Dr. S. C. Gupta. He is here in somewhere in Pamur we found it and then we proved, tried to prove its pathogenesis. It is very difficult to sporulate the fungus on it. 
but it was discovered. So these are some of the important things on that. Then the phase came when I came from West Africa, things got a little bit changed here and I was asked to work on groundnut. Mogogo said groundnut, uh, Mogogo went to Southern Africa and then I was asked to work on groundnut and that was a phase uh, period when I 10 years, next year I work on foliar diseases, rosette again it took me to Africa. So I had a very intimate relationship with either with the West Africa or with the Southern Africa. Southern Africa, uh, sorghum and millet took me to the Southern Africa, groundnut took me to the West Africa in general. So this is the, uh, I mean host assistance. As I said, it is the pillar of all the disease management without, and that is the strength of it, we said, we worked on it. And then the came, the time came when we were talking about integrated pest management, integrated disease management, and fortunately or unfortunately for foliar disease or groundnut, we have to combine the, we have to combine the judicial use of fungicides with the recommended or with the high level of resistance. That is how the identification of ICGB 9114 was done in collaboration or in assistance with Dr. Uh, H.D. Upadhyay. And I can still remember the plots. These are the plots. One, two, and three, which was, this is the beginning of uh, ICGB 9114. And today we are happy that this particular line is going wonderful all around, you know, everywhere, including uh, Andhra Pradesh and in uh, Odisha. Concurrently, we were also asked, we were also developing the capacity and the people were coming from Vietnam, people were coming from uh, Indonesia and from other clan countries and then Dr. Gaura and his, who was in those days perhaps clan coordinator, he kept on sending people. So we started capacity building by catching hold the young farmers and showing them around in India. This is the farmers participatory identification of ICGB 9114. And I am sorry, Dr. Opadhe, that picture did not come where you were there. I had that picture, but I could not clear it. It was in the slide of those days. So, this was, this, it was a big science change here, you know, technology change. We used to take most of the slides in black and white or in the form of the slide, so I could not convert it into this. And this is what it all happened about ICGB 9114. And here I would like to mention the contribution of this gentleman. Narayan Rao, who was really a kind of a Masiha, I should say, who worked very hard with me in, the, in identification, propagating and conducting the experiments on this. Then came in between somebody, some CFC project came, yes, they said, okay, somebody has to go to work to, on Rosette. So I was used as a step knee, you know, sometimes. <laughs> so they said, go and work on and CFC project. Farid wrote to DG or said, okay, Suresh will go. I have to read about the rosette disease, which was very important, yellow rosette and green rosette and the effort rearing and then making them viruluferous and all those things I created in Bagoda. It itself is a big thing, a very beautiful thing, I mean, in terms of facilities. And then... Uh, I think Bach was the first person who worked on it and he worked in uh, Malawi, his uh, Bach, yeah, William Box. So using his technique and then uh, why this variety is etc. Then we did and I think this is Usha, you know, she also went as a germplasm conservation from here to and she and came and then we, uh, uh, we have established this thing. She was working for germplasm conservation in Niger. But this was again a perfect. And then Dr. Oloronzu here, and I think uh, she was from Nigeria, and this this is Dr. Oloronzu. She was the head of the department, and these are the uh, government officials who have appreciated that, yes, groundnut is coming back to Nigeria. That was a slogan in those days. Then in between, a lot of happened in Nikriset. I won't mention that. I thought, okay, let me also secure myself, and the call came from desert, the Saudi Arabia, I went. That was a period when I became a FES man, I mean the farm machinery man, 14, 18, 19 tractors, big combines and all. I never realized that I was captured there. I was made, uh, I was put in the OSCs, you know, they they snatched my passport, they snatched every, my identity, everything and I was pushed in this, the Wadi, Wadi al Dasir, the empty quarter, the desert. You please see in the dictionary or in the map where the Wadi al Dasir is there, an empty quarter. There's nobody lives there. This is the world's largest desert where I was 
push when mm-hmm. these were the big big machines were handed over to me with 400 500 people some from philippines some from sudan or it looks like that you are in a culprit camp you are everywhere you are surrounded by dacoits and all you know but anyway but there again i try to see what can be done this is an experiment on uh, weed management if you do not use weed man weeds just we left the uh, we close the nozzles and see how much we replication one two and three so this is the damage which one can avoid so this is the weed management mechanical weed management and i also learned the techniques of baling non baling and trade and all uneconomical by and large i also grew the potatoes and became an entomologist here and then i wrote to sharma about the h sharma about the control of the june beetle then he wrote something something from the experiment point of view but i said i am growing 10000 hectares of potato how to control this farm was 50000 total acreage was 90000 in saudi arabia arable according to them but again the arable has a very very definition and out of that this farm i was handling 50000 each field was 200 hectares so and then this was the population of the june beetle and these are the size and the constrictions of the app, uh, potatoes because of many reason nitrogen management water management fertilizer management so all those things i learned to grow the spunta variety of potato here and to an extent i was and came back to it said happily they gave me my brown card and i came to preset again to take the challenge golden era of opportunity that was the golden era my dear friend so uh, chick pea and pigeon pea diseases these are the things we did and changing scenario this is the most productive period we have loveliest association with dr gowda and best possible uh, association with uh, dr h c sharma and with uh, puran gaur where we started working very together uh, together and of course there was lot of constraints of funding but the management helped us a lot and i'm just uh, this is what we did and everywhere we were appreciated and this was and this was also a period where i was start we were started thinking of succeeding because after all one can play only limited overs you know you can't keep on batting i have was 20 overs so and i have to continuously bat with sixers you know so that was the chris gale and i was had a lot of similarities but we enjoyed this period and i am thankful to everyone point again may again making is i am not bringing any publications etc that archived then this is we also discovered yes that along as i am getting old but as the things are also getting old in the field and that there is a changing scenario of chickpea diseases and this is the new thing which i am handing over to my successors and then similar thing we did in pigeon pea we had a very good association with dr uh, kb saxena and everything we have wrapped up very recently few months ago in two bulletins Uh, no information bulletin ninety two and ninety three. At least they will be. Rem- I will be remembered through these will bulletins another twenty five, twenty years. I am sure. If on host plant resistance, which is the pillar and the foundation stone of our research at Ecrisat. Then okay, in between some projects came. They asked me to work with the bees. I said I have only one bee bee. Because no, you have to work with seven bees. And so I started working on. Uh, we started working rather. I am using too much eye today. we started working uh, on this and this was the era when we started working in nepal and uh, I, i am the only parent pathologist who has nrmp badge also you know so i changed many badges so that is i think i have to ask hr to give me all those badges so that when you retire from army you take medals at least i will take different badges with me so that was uh, a thing and there i learned the lesson how to pack everything together in the form of the improved crop management or improved icm the breeding the pathology the downy uh, the the uh, the nutrient management etc yes because end product is the farmer and this was very successful we have reestablished the path- uh, the rehabilitated the plant uh, this uh, chickpea in the rice fellows in nepal and it gave us a very wonderful publication in the form of a uh, a feature article in plant disease so thanks to the defid and others and this is how i was interacting with my another hill tribe in nepal you know and this is the lady who was very afraid who uh, and she became our later on a big uh, seed farmer 
And the same thing we replicated in Bangladesh and Barind, of course, Jagdish and Dr. Gowda took the initiative which I followed up and then we did it. And there was uh, an, something similar but not on the rain, not on the rain fed, but this was the rain fed rice fellows with the NFSM project we did and a considerable success was gained and some people are getting laurels on this from our counterparts, our friends. So this is how it was spread at individual farmer level. Some of the very progressive farmers, we gave them only see 30 kg, they multiply to 10 ton, 10 tons. So this was good thing. And these are some of the shots of our colleagues with whom we work to rehabilitate or to expand the, uh, the, the chickpea in the Rainfield Rice Fellows of Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh and of Jharkhand. Then coming the modern era where I was perhaps misfit or whatever. So the fungal genomics and climate change. These two things was started last five to six years or seven years. And we started, we were perhaps the first to uh, sequence the whole genome of Fizerum oxys formosiceris. Our group is in, uh, almost in a position, will be publishing it very soon. So this is first thing we did accordingly. We have also done the transcriptome analysis and this is something to cope up with the time and using the best facilities here as well as elsewhere, we did it. Now, the latest in the cap, the last feeder perhaps, the, and the brightest one, the establishment of CIU or CCRP. This gentleman I know for the last uh, 42 years and this I know 41 years. So they are very senior people and I am here, you know. So we had... Uh, the, this is the establishment of you all know about it and uh, I think this was something good that we could, we have done it and these are our facilities which you have already seen. Now, acknowledgement and encouragements, so in those days, you know, you, you whenever you used to write a trip report, it's a very thick trip reports and our bosses, whether it's a Dr. Gowda or the Dave Hossington or uh, McDonald or Swindle, they used to write. I will just read one. Thank you for sending me a copy of this trip report. I congratulate you and Philip Chingome for the good work done on grilling but successful trip. This was the trip which we did from Metopos to Mombasa, uh, Metopos to almost northern Nigeria by road, 1600 kilometers. And we have to survey by road. So we collected each and every, uh, whatever the procedures were there, the disease and all. And then there was a strike next day, Dr. Swindle asked me, you are the person who went there, yes sir. And you find no Icrisal sorghum, I said, yes sir. And then called me to his room and asked each and everything about it. So these were the good periods we have been, uh, I have to encourage, I have to acknowledge the encouragements. Dr. Gora said, the bad thing was only there that you have to work under micro notices. The micro notices, sometimes you have to be very rushing yourself, but we enjoyed, we had energy and we had, and thus we have a lot of fun also. See, this is, this is Kiboko. Next to, I was, I was sent to Kiboko to establish the finger millet blast nursery with the, some project with Dr. Mukuru. And next day I found that next to my nursery are the two giraffes. And this is taking the seeds across the Padma in Bangladesh on a ferry. Nepal, when we established, everything was on, bar, uh, all the rivers were flooded and we have to almost unload and deload our all vehicles. And this was followed by two truck loads of seed behind. Of course, this is Southern Africa. I'm acknowledging my mentors and colleagues. He is the bubbling person. And I have always rubbed shoulders with economists. I couldn't bring it here, but... Always we were shoulders, we rubbed shoulders. So this is, and then my Dr. House and uh, John Moshonga, I think Moshonga. So they introduced me to the to the Africa and to the African culture and how to work them. And here is the famous mathematician pathologist, the Zedox, with whom we corresponding uh, correspond a lot, which we call today in today's language the modeling or epidemiological modeling we worked and acknowledging the colleagues in legume pathology who have always, who were always with me. I'm leaving behind the very young team. As per Chris said, norms, I think they have, now we have very, uh, we have a good balance, gender balance in this team. And I hope they will be doing good job. 
and finally one minute sir before i say thank you let me call mamta here on the dais uh, uh, here please one minute i received a notice that i have to hand over the charge and because i have to travel this morning i was appreciating dr goda he came this morning only or yesterday sir? he came this morning and directly he he came to this seminar you be there so sir in your presence i am giving the key to mamta sharma and this is the you read what is written on this key so with the so many of uh, <laughs> witnesses i have done my duty with your blessings and in your presence mamta this is for you you have to read what is written there i said i requested you loudly so thank you very much i think i took 6 minutes 35 minutes so thank you very much finally izzatein shahratein chahatein we will translate in english also izzatein shahratein chahatein ulfatein koi bhi cheez duniya mein rehti nahi aaj main jahan hu kal koi aur tha यह भी एक दौर है वह भी एक दौर था विद दिस रिस्पेक्ट इन अदर वर्ड्स हुर नॉट हुर इंग्लिश ओरिएंटेशन लेट मी गिव इट टू यू रिस्पेक्ट फेम लव एंड ट्रेवल्स आर नॉट परमानेंट टूडे आई एम हेयर एट दिस प्लेस यस्टरडे सम बडी एल्स वॉज हेयर दिस इज माई टाइम माई एरा दैट वॉज समबडीज टाइम समबडीज एरा इट विल बी समबडीज टाइम इट विल बी समबडीज एरा thank you very much for all the support and making my day thank you very much yes sir thank you dr pande although you have given the key i cannot sign the note no objection certificate <laughs> no objection you will get sir that is only key to success <laughs> so friends here is what uh, pande has given to the institute and as i indicated in the beginning his uh, vast canvas of uh, working across uh, different crops not only different crops different regions asia west africa east africa southern africa so he has uh, worked in all the regions as well so any questions comments and mind you this is not his farewell <laughs> let me ask you you have given your experiences but if you have to give a few take home message to the younger pathologists what will those be read one paper every day journal article without any fail irrespective of the home and uh, what of the commitments you have read one paper definitely one day either you browse or though secondly it's not for a young pathologist uh, as i said it's a passion and you enjoy your work don't worry for what will happen what he says what they says within the framework of our mandate yes as a pathologist i have lot of things comes in my mind but i know my limitations institute wants from me this thing. you have to understand the institute responsibilities division responsibility and your contribution to that if you are clear in this whole then but to keep up and cope to co uh, to keep up at par with your subject read one paper every day or organize everything systematically it comes every day and this we have been i have been doing even till today so that is my i'm not sure uh, what else you have to read that's it and organize yourself properly that's it i never thought in here and there never yes uh, as per my nature i was little bit loud little bit impulsive but certain focus things were i am very serious by nature internally very serious very much committed very much passionate and for me passion is very simple it's you have to give your heart and soul okay 
serious interaction with dr pandey started when he came to groundnut group and started working on uh, during duncan macdonald's time on 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 fourier diseases and later on much more uh, uh, closely when he took those eight to nine varieties including 9114 9114 yeah. 9267 early maturing with lower i mean say moderate level of resistance were identified here and in Nanantpur. We bred those varieties, no doubt. We were the breeder we bred. But introducing them to farmers, I have absolutely no hesitation in saying that in 2000, Pandey was the, Dr. Pandey was the person who took them there, worked with the farmers. We used to go once in a, a week or once in uh, fortnight to see those trials in farmers field and uh, with Dr. Srinivasan of RDT and uh, few other people. So the beginning was done uh, with the efforts of Dr. Pandey and I do acknowledge that and I enjoyed your traveling with you of course on a very limited occasions. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pandey mentioned uh, reading one research article per day. I think uh, the other things that uh, Dr. Pandey also does is to visit the field every day. That's true. Sir. Not, not many of us do it nowadays. I think that is something that uh, we all should and must do. Not only the fields are taken at, but even on the farmer's fields. Of course, we can't go to the farmer's field every day, but uh, at least uh, we should visit the on-farm trials as often as uh, we can, because only then uh, we can uh, monitor and ensure that what we intend to do on the farmer's field gets uh, done. So with this, uh, I would like to Ah, okay. The, oh, the economist <laughs> who rubbed the shoulders. They won't leave me. I Pandey. thought I will yeah, escape I with one slide. <laughs> no, 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 Pandey, you mentioned about rubbing shoulders. What, what we found was that 
you became an economist which was no amazing. doubt about it then <laughs> <So laughs> and ja pk joshi yeah, and birthal and uh, so so even the carpool were, there was an economist so later so on. that you could have even got a job as an economist if you wanted to Here I would time. like to mention about one person with whom I try to brush up or improve my reading. She was my car mate, Lydia. We have enjoyed Lydia. It's a special, the special. I mean, acknowledgement to you. We have discussed a lot in the carpool. So that is one culture which I like. You know, I if you go as a scientist, you discuss only about science, but. Traveling with the people from economists, from the Chanda and from Lydia and me, and we used to talk a lot about a lot of things outside. Because part of that gave me some flair to, you know, coin my words or play with my words. And on top of it, she used to correct my English every day, even after at this age, every sentence because he and she, I always confuse. <laughs> she said it and that, I always confuse. No, I have a very good. She said, "No, Dr. Pandey, he." I said, "Okay," and I used to get irritated. No, Dr. Pandey, it is she. Always get irritated. So that was an, another anecdote to this seminar, sir. Just to complete, uh, oh, yeah. what little we uh, we were together, Dr. Pandey gets up. We we thought of implementing, but we are not. He is up by before four o'clock in the morning, and by the time seven, when others get up, he has finished half his day, half his work is <laughs> for him, and then evening. Backs up early, doesn't because you know he has done his whole day's work. And after that, he doesn't want to bother about work, but you know take life easy and go around. Well, that is the time when we people like us think that oh we didn't do this, we didn't do that. He has no such regrets. So we have a lot to learn from him. Of course, I don't know whether we can get up at four o'clock. <laughs> no, I am free. I will come and knock your door from tomorrow. <laughs> don't worry. That is why I said this is not a spiritual function. What people? No, no. Please don't, don't. Yeah. Well. So uh, at this stage, uh, let me thank uh, Dr. Pandey. And as I said, I don't want to say more because this is not uh, his farewell. But uh, all I wanted was to give to give. Uh, Glimpse of uh, the work uh, that he did in the institute, and I think uh, by hearing to him, you have seen uh, the wide array of uh, research that he has done. I think that is something that all of us uh, need to understand and learn from him. The adaptive nature of Dr. Pandey is something that uh, uh, is a lesson to all of us. So with this. Uh, Let me thank, and you still need more gender sensitization. Thank you very much. Sir. Because when you started, you said gentlemen. You didn't say ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> With a humble <laughs> apology, I close my talk. <laughs> thank you. Please thank you uh, much, join us for coffee and tea. And